Hey Drain fans, I'm Rocky Canyon Arrow and this is my Rockwall Canyon Railroad. On today's episode we're going to talk about uh, track logistics, uh, what I like to do for curves, switches, and grades. And of course to do proper track work we need a proper track work engine. So here we have a new 44 tonner which is joining the ranks, uh, painted after the New Hampshire Central uh, paint scheme, number 360, and his pal number 180. All right, so moving on, uh, here we have 360 making its uh, trial run. It's uh, an older engine, actually, that I've uh, acquired secondhand. And unfortunately, the uh, gearing is um, about had it. It's uh, got cracked axle uh, gears. Uh, so the way that this engine works is it has, has uh, two half shafts, and they're coupled together with a plastic gear. And when the sleeves of that plastic gear crack, uh, it still runs, uh, but you see we have this tremendous uh, vibration or, or pulsating action as the train goes on the track. So we need to take care of that. We need to get some new gears for that. And uh, thankfully they're still available, even though the, the locomotive is long ago discontinued. And also I did another engine for a friend in Amtrak. Uh, his has the same issue, of course, but, um, you know, like I said, the parts are available. And... Uh, some of the parts, like the handrails, I had to make myself. I can see I soldered those up from copper. All right, moving on. We have a nice day. I had some trains out a couple weeks ago. And uh, let me kind of survey the track. You can see my ideas on, on curves and switches here. So since I am uh, using the Code 332 rail, which is the heavier LGB scale uh, rail, I tend to use... Uh, number six switches as my largest switch. Uh, Aristocraft and uh, USA Trains both produce a number six switch at the moment. I believe AML might be have one in the works. And I'm also a fan of the LGB R5 switch, uh, which is approximately a 16 foot diameter uh, equivalent switch. And the difference between the number six and the LGB R5 is that the number six switch diverts with straight sections of track at the uh, at the um, frog, whereas the R5 um, actually creates a radius. You can see that in this picture right here. On the lower left, we have a USA Trains number six, and on the lower right, we have a LGB R5. Now, another thing of note in this picture, you see that the USA Trains number six switch is actually making a crossover to another USA Trains number six switch. And these are the only uh, switches I recommend for doing crossovers like that. They have a long enough straight section in between. We really want to avoid doing an S-curve. So pairing two LGB R5s together to make a crossover would be a really bad idea. Uh, even though they're very wide radius, you're still going to have lots of trou trouble with large passenger cars and engines and so forth. You'll also notice in my work that I tend to avoid having uh, sidings have any kind of S-turn as well. I usually try to work them into a curve if I can. Now the reason I do that is the number six switch, while it looks really big, it's actually a fairly tight uh, switch. Uh, so we try to, try to use them uh, as cleverly as we can um, because they do take up a lot of space uh, in the model train world, but um, they're actually still a fairly tight switch. We also make good use of the LGB R5 switches in yards like this. Uh, they take up a lot less space because they are a full radius switch. Uh, so there's that, not that extra um, section of, of straight track to, to worry about. But again, you got to be clever where you put them because you don't want to create any S-turns. Now this section here is where my main line separates and goes off to the first loops and up the mountain. It was really uh, required a bit of clever uh, thinking to figure out how to arrange the switches here, again, to avoid S-turns. All right, now moving on to grades. This is my uh, hill section of the railroad. So now the way we measure a grade is typically in percentages. Uh, if you have 100 inches and you climb one inch over that distance, that's a 1% grade. So I have a 48 inch level, which is roughly half of 100 inches. So if we measure one inch, that means we are at 2%. Half an inch is 1% and one and a half inches is 3%. Typically on the main line, I think 2% is probably the appropriate maximum grade. You can get away with 3% as long as it kind of evens out a little bit, and uh, that, that's generally what I do on my railroad. Of course, sometimes when we're working on the railroad and we're trying to figure out the right pathway, uh, there are some obstructions that we just cannot get by. 
uh, to maintain the proper gradient. Um, in this particular area, um, I, I like to have the reverse loop be as, as level as possible because I do run live steam and uh, this section of the track is hard to, to reach from the viewing area down below. So I like to make sure that the train's not going to stall back there. Uh, so I really want the track to be at a convenient um, height. Unfortunately, I have a double track coming through here that actually has to make a gauntlet to go through this passage here because of that large boulder. Uh, I just could not move that rock. So we've got this uh, new carbide tool here, and we're going to break it up, and we're going to drill some holes in the rock, and we're going to put some wedge and feathers in there and, and bust it up. And uh, I used my Ryobi battery-powered uh, hammer drill with a nice Bosch drill. Uh, and plowed right through the granite. It was amazing. Um, took a few shots here. I had to, had to try maybe three times to get a good break, and then I got a giant chunk that came off. Man, this thing was massive. It was very hard to lift it, actually. I had to use a, a big pry bar to get it out of there. Uh, but the process is very easy. Just drill the holes and put the wedge and feather in there and tap them with a hammer. It's all about patience and uh, placement of the holes. So now my track can come through here, double track. I had to remove the bridge over the overpass, but that's all right. We'll figure that out later with a new bridge. Um, and we got everything buttoned up and, and all the track back together again. And I couldn't be happier to have both tracks coming through there. And uh, so we had to test it out, of course. So here's our Boston and Maine GP38 and Rocco Canyon GP38 making its first way through uh, the new uh, opened up siding here. Uh, this will really open up capacity for the railroad uh, to have you know multiple large freight trains uh, in, in operation. And really, there's three loops of this size at the Rockwell Canyon uh, reverse loop now. So this is a major improvement. Um, it'll you know make operations a lot easier. It'll be able to have two parked freight trains in there potentially, maybe even more. Uh, you know, you see a short freight train like this one, you can even have two in the same track. Um, I also have a high line. And then, of course, we'll have commuter trains running through there. So it's going to be a, a busy little section here in the future. But, yeah, I couldn't be happier to have this uh, buttoned up here. And i got to get some ballast in there because it's still a little bit low. But And over here in the freight side of things, um, so the plan here is to put a, a mill building in, a fairly long mill building along the, the uh, track here. And we're going to have some, some uh, almost like a time saver switch arrangement there. So be able to... Uh, switch cars to the the mill industry and uh, probably have ability to actually get up on top of it It'll be kind of like a duck deck construction All right, so moving on over here. You can see we you need to get this track put together here uh, We need a new bridge over the, the the double track main line and eventually gonna head off towards the woods there All right, this is our st. Patrick's side of things uh, big changes coming over here obviously the roads gonna be moving over so we can accommodate the new track position here. There's a little crab apple tree that the track's going to be coming around towards. So a major repositioning here. Um, you can see I'm working on the, the lower part of the pathway right now uh, where the new uh, section is going to be. And that'll connect over to Rockwell Canyon uh, and then it's going to loop all the way around to the back. So we're going to have a big big circuit there. But the railroad's going to, um, where the, where the black um, tables are, it's going to come back over here towards the apple tree and then loop around that way. It's just a, a, a drier, better area, better for viewing. St. Patrick's uh, terminal actually is going to be moving to Rockwell Canyon in this area right here. So I guess it won't be called St. Patrick's anymore. It'll be Rockwell Canyon Terminal. And it'll look something like this uh, when it's completed. Hopefully it has some platforms and so forth. You can see I have the, the switches already in place for that. And of course, we'll have to have a platform on the main line there so that trains that are just passing through can, can stop at the station without having to back into the terminal. Uh, so somewhere in that area, there'll be a platform. Uh, freight trains can obviously bypass and go on the inside track or up the mountain and get around to the, the freight yard that way. So this will be great to have this, this freight yard uh, figured out here and um, have the passenger trains out of that area. Um, it's been kind of a... A back and forth thing trying to figure out how I wanted to work this, but I think I'm pretty happy with the arrangement now, so this is great. And over here at Pont Show, I've been steadily bringing uh, extra loads of material that I found to kind of build up the back side of this. Um, the picture is kind of deceiving. There's actually a fair amount of material there. It's, uh, it's 
major improvement from what it was. Uh, there was there was so little material back there that it was kind of kind of hairy coming along on the track there because there's just nothing um, behind it. Uh, but that was actually a place to put um, the station and love to be able to put a um, another siding in there. So. All right, so that's about it. Uh, one other question I've been asked is if I use a rail bender, and the answer is yes, I have a double rail bender that I use. And in general, I find that the rail bender is most useful on the stainless steel ra track that I have. Uh, brass track, uh, particularly LGB track, bends by hand very easily, in my opinion. Uh, you can use a r double rail bender on it, and it's, it gives you a little better uh, result, but uh, in general, it's the stainless steel that really needs it the most, or you're going to get some really bad distortion to the track. Uh, as for a pre-bent rail, uh, LGB R5 16 foot diameter is my minimum and I like to go with the uh, AML 20 foot diameter. Alright folks, that's a wrap for today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Please feel free to ask questions and come back again. I'm Rocky Canyon Arrow and that's how we do trains around here.